I have a love dislike love relationship with Oceania. So let's review it now. So Roja Parfum's Oceania is basically three fragrances in one. And that's what I respect about this house so much and what Roja Dove actually does with his fragrances because they come across extremely complex, some of the most complex fragrances I've ever gotten my nose on. And that is why I have a love-dislike love relationship with it because I love the opening and I love the dry down. But we'll talk about that later on now. At first, I want to mention that this fragrance was actually sent out for review by Roja Parfum. So thank you very much to those guys over there. I'll leave their link down below where you can check out, of course, their entire fragrance catalog, which trust me, you're going to want to because they make some phenomenal creations. So let's go over some information about Oceania. Now, this fragrance was launched in 2019. Retail price for the only size it comes in, which is the 100ml bottle like I have in hand, is going to run you $340. And the concentration is an Eau de Parfum. The perfumer, of course, is Roja Dove himself, which is just a master perfumer. He literally only creates works of art when it comes to fragrances, and this one is no exception to that. So let's take a look at the packaging and presentation you will get with Oceania now. So taking a look at this box, I gotta say, this is honestly one of the best boxes I've ever seen. I just love the 3D effect with the waves and the attention to detail. Of course, Roja Parfum's Oceania. You got the waves right here that resembles the plaque on the bottle. On the back, you do have a fragrance by Roja Dove with your ingredients, made in England, of course. And on the bottom, you will have your batch code, authenticated product and seeing your product was produced. Now it does lift up like so. It is an Eau de Parfum, like I said. And then your fragrance is housed in there and then nothing inside of the box, but man, this box just looks so good. So hats off to Roja for this one. So take a look at this bottle. Now, just holding this bottle and looking at it, you know you have a piece of art right here as well. Of course, you have that blue gemstone cap, which is just so, so luxurious. Of course, you have the waves right here on the plaque, a sticker right there with your batch code as well engraved. On the side, you actually have Roja Parfums on both sides in gold. Of course, a fragrance by Roja Dove and a fragrance made in England. Nothing inside the cap, nothing on the atomizer, but you do have Roja's uh, signature right there engraved into, I think these are gold-plated caps as well. They are extremely heavy. And it doesn't click in or it's not magnetic, but it does hold on by friction very snugly. In the top, you have lavender, mandarin orange, grapefruit, bergamot, lemon, lime, rosemary, thyme, and lychee cubeba. In the middle, you have violet, geranium, jasmine, jasmine sandback, and ylang ylang. And in the base, you have cedar, musk, iris, moss, vetiver, juniper berries, galbanum, sandalwood, vanilla, benzoin, and labdanum. And this fragrance is classified as a citrusy fresh. And just looking at that note breakdown, you don't expect anything less from Roja Dove himself. So let's go in and spray this one and test out the atomizer. Very nice atomizer, it is pressurized, which I love. I am a sucker for a good atomizer, of course. Now, with all those notes, that's why it is so, so complex, but let's remind myself of that opening. So in the opening, what I mostly get is a ton of citruses, but the two that mostly stand out to me is the mandarin orange and that kind of zesty, bitter grapefruit note. But it does also have a mintiness, which I think is coming from the rosemary. And you do get a powdery kind of fougere lavender in here as well, even though this is not classified as a fougere barbershop fragrance at all. But there is definitely powdery lavender that works flawlessly alongside the citruses and that minty rosemary note. And what's weird about this one is, of course, it's called Oceania, but there is no aquatic notes. There's no like sea notes really or anything like that that would actually make it smell like the ocean, so to say but it definitely does have that ocean breeze kind of vibe in the opening, which I absolutely love this opening so much. It's so high quality and it's just so refreshing as well. And you do get that ocean breeze vibe. So the top is actually the love part for me, but once you make your way into the mid is the dislike or hate part from my nose at least, even though the mid to you guys might be your favorite part if you like white florals or florals in general, because once you make your way into the mid, which actually comes pretty quickly, you do get a ton of white florals from, of course, both of those jasmine notes, which I don't mind jasmine, 
But what I actually don't like that much is that violet and geranium note combined together with the jasmine. It comes across extremely floral, extremely powdery, and it actually kind of has like a clean laundry detergent vibe to it. Pretty much like the most expensive laundry detergent smelling fragrance there is for sure. Now the mid unfortunately does last a very long time until you get your way into the base, a couple hours or so. But once you actually make your way into the base, it's back to the love aspect to me. Because what you find in the base is actually a very nice waxy iris note, which I love iris. You also do get a ton of uh, cedar wood and some vetiver as well. It gives it a little bit of earthiness. But what's weird is I get some kind of salty aspect to the base of this fragrance and I'm not sure where it's coming from. And unfortunately, I'm actually shocked because Rosa Dove did not include ambergris, which I love the way he does ambergris, especially in Scandal Parfum Cologne. It just has an animalic saltiness to it from obviously it comes from Wales. And I think ambergris would have fit this fragrance perfectly, hence the name Oceania. That's where ambergris comes from is the ocean, but I guess he decided not to. And you also do get a little bit of resins from that myrrh as well, which just does give it kind of like um, a warming coziness to the fragrance composition and definitely boost the performance. We'll talk about that a little bit later though. Just all in all, like I said, you basically get three fragrances in one. You get in the top, you get a ton of citruses. In the mid, you get a ton of florals. And in the base, you get some woodiness, some waxiness, and some earthiness as well. Not a bad fragrance by any means, even though I'm not the biggest fan of the mid. Obviously, fragrances are subjective, but at the end of the day, this fragrance is so high quality, so luxurious, and of course, one of the best freshy complex fragrances money can buy. So let's talk about seasons and occasions for Oceania. Of course, this is well suited for the spring and summer, not so much the fall and winter. And for occasions, this one actually can be worn casually. Like if you're going to a beach, if you're going out to um, on swimming, surfboarding, you know, something casual like that, or just going out on the beach to read a book, whatever suits your boat, it definitely works for that. But it actually works for being formal as well. If you're like uh, dressing up, in, especially in the spring and summer, or if you're going to like an outdoor wedding or something like that, it works flawlessly. For gender and age now, this one is unisex. There's nothing that makes it masculine. There's nothing that makes it extremely feminine. Even though there are a ton of florals in here, it definitely could go both ways right down the middle. Now, for age groups, this one is on the mature side of things rather than youthful. Just because it does have all those florals in here, it just leans more on the mature side of things. I don't see a younger guy, and especially a teenager, actually enjoying this fragrance or appreciating the fragrance for what it actually is. Now let's wrap it up on performance. Now, honestly, this is where it shocked me quite a bit. Now, how I rate performance is on a below average, average, or above average scale. And average is eight hours of longevity. Above average is when it's above that. And when it's below eight hours, it's below average to me. Now. Oceania actually comes across above average. I get around 12 hours of longevity on my skin of this fragrance, which is just blows me away, especially for being a citrus, freshy floral fragrance. But I think it's because of that woody, earthy, resinous base that just boosts the performance of this stuff. Extremely long lasting. And the projection is actually very strong as well, especially that mid. A bunch of florals pop off of my skin a ton, but that also just might be my skin chemistry. I don't know. Maybe on your skin, you don't get as many florals, but on me, the florals are proud and they're extremely loud. No complaints whatsoever with the performance of this stuff. It is extremely strong, guys. Do not have to worry about reapplying or nothing like that. If you're looking for a spring, summer, freshy fragrance that actually performs, you have to check out Oceania, trust me. But that's gonna do it for my review of the iconic Oceania by Rosa Parfums, which I think is one of the most popular from their entire house, and it is for good reason. But leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it, subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll catch all you guys in the next fragrance upload. Take care, everybody.